How are you doing, Kat? I'm well. How are you? Thank you for doing this interview with me. Can you give everyone an intro to yourself and what you do? Sure. Um, my name is Kat Starrett, and I am a production makeup and hair artist. Okay. How did you get started? I was taking coursework geared toward becoming a physician's assistant. And um, doing that, like either half to three, four, three quarters time um, working in the restaurant industry. So, um, and the kids were probably, I don't know, three and five at that point. You know, I was doing that and, you know, just really, really struggling, like just struggling to like get through my classes and like not spending a lot of time with my kids and they were young. Um, and I started looking at the rotations for a physician's assistant and um, wondering how I was ever going to get through those with two small kids. So I started questioning, uh, I started questioning, okay, is this really what I want to do? Because I think there was just more of a curiosity of anatomy and physiology um, rather than the desire to treat people and like work with patients. So, I just thought, okay, if I'm going to be spending the rest of my life, you know, because we, when we're working, we're spending most of our time with those people than we are with our families. And I just started to question, okay, do, is this something I want to spend most of my time doing when I'm away from my family, who I'm also spending, you know, a lot of time um, away from right now? And the answer was no. So uh, I was probably about, 26 or 27, um, ended up like making this big move to Oregon State with my two little children to just kind of like start over. Um, everybody thought it was crazy and probably was, but you know, my response to that was, well, I can like wait tables and take classes and struggle in Oregon the same way I can here. You know, I just kind of like needed a reset. So out there, it was just, you know, we spent a little over a year, um, I had been trying to get on with MAC Cosmetics. This was like MAC back in its heydays, like or like late 90s, like early 2000s. When you say try to get on, what does that mean? I had been trying to interview with them and like I wouldn't, I never made it. Like they never hired me. I would do like the makeup interview um, and I didn't have any retail makeup experience. Uh, so it was just, and again, it was just so tough to get with MAC in those days because there were few, so few makeup counters and so few positions available. So while I was in Oregon, I actually um, started working for a makeup company out there, Estee Lauder, like we all know them, just to gain the retail experience and um, ended up moving back to Indy. And when I moved back, one of the, the managers at, at Mac and in Indy approached me and they were opening, opening a new location and um, asked me if I'd be interested. And I was hired and from like 1999 until late 2004, I worked for Mac and, um, but back to- Were you I, doing I, makeup back, for Mac? I was doing makeup for Mac. So, so, and that's kind of like, that. there was like, I missed a, a point. So I decided I wanted to do makeup. Okay, yeah, that so was my that about. was my that was my passion like and I thought okay if I want if I'm going to be away from my family all the time you know most of the time then what do I want to be doing like I didn't necessarily want it to feel like work um, and that's something that I had always aspired to be and uh, I just thought you know once I got pregnant with my daughter and then my son and then like went through uh, the divorce I just didn't think it would be possible to support a family. Um, with an occupation of doing makeup. So, um, yeah, anyway, yeah. Well, how did you learn to do makeup? Did, they, did Mac send you to a school? Mac did not send me to school. So, like, I, it's something that I always, like, since I was a, a, probably seven, eight, maybe even younger, like, I, I mean, my mom would let me put makeup on her. Like, I had little cousins who, would let me practice makeup on them. Um, I grew up in a, and like, let me know if this is too much. You can like cut me off. So like I grew up, I, I'm adopted. So I grew up with an um, all white Cauc Caucasian family who like everybody had like the most beautiful eyes and like, you know what I mean? Everyone just had like these light eyes and these 
lids and like these eyelashes and um, I don't know if you remember Dynasty or Dallas or any of those nighttime soap operas. I'm gonna say yes just so I can look. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not any of those. You don't, no. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, they were nighttime, nighttime soaps, soap operas ba basically. And I just remember the women on there having like the most beautiful smoky eyes. That was the lighting. And that was yes, the, yeah, and like yeah. glossy lips and like glowy, like glowy cheeks and, you know, hair like feathered, just like quaffed mm -hmm. hair. And I really wanted to recreate that on my, uh, my seven-year-old cousins. And okay. I did. <laughs> they let me. And your travels brought you to Philadelphia and before we started, you told me you have only been here for 13 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before you moved, you were well established in, in Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Yes. So when you moved here having no clients, how did you hit the ground running? What tools did you use to market yourself to get clients here in Philadelphia? So um, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, if that's OK. Yeah. OK, so in India, I worked for Mac from 1999 to roughly like end of 2000. Um, my retail manager at the time, she would often send me to do events. Um, again, this is Mac back in its heyday. Like everybody wanted Mac. It was packed. Um, I don't even like Sephora wasn't even around, you know, like all these like brands. Um, in individual stores, just it wasn't a thing. So uh, she would send me often to do, like I did Missy Elliott's makeup once. Oh, wow. um, I worked with Rihanna, like in her the very beginning of her career. And um, there were other things that she would just send me to do, like as a spokesperson, like women driven events. So um, an opportunity came up where there was a photo shoot for one of the hospitals in Indy. And I think someone just kind of came in and asked her at one point uh, if she could do it. And she did. And I think, you know, the rate was pretty decent for then and there. And she wasn't able to do it on this one day. So she asked me if I would go do it. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. You know, I knew I could do just like natural makeup, but I didn't have any idea of, what lifestyle meant, like what commercial meant, what advertising meant or anything like that. Definitely my hair ability was just like, I was comfortable with it in that I was comfortable doing my little cousins and like I had a daughter, you know what I mean? Like I was comfortable touching people and like being close to people. So um, I went to that job. It was, you know, a couple in a park and had no idea what was going on. There's this photographer taking photos, thought I did okay and uh, got paid and I just thought, wow, okay, how much am I making at Mac mm. like per week? And I was, I was a manager at that point, so like salary was okay, especially in the Midwest, like decent, um, but I was still working weekends, you know, and like spending time away from my family. So I got a little taste of that photo shoot mm -hmm. and um, the day rates and everything like that. Yes, yeah. yes. And I was like, okay, if I work like one to two jobs or this many days a week, then I'm making money for myself and not making this company like all this money. How can I do this all the time? So I, um, you know, just kind of went, I, I asked that photographer, like if he could refer me to anyone. He wasn't particularly helpful, but I, Ended up, and again, this is before people like really used Google. Mm -hmm. um, ended up coming across the ASMP. Oh yeah, that's a good site. Yeah, so I ended up coming, and again, like I have no idea how. You know, I think I, I think I figured out that he was a commercial photographer. You know, and then I was using whatever search engine at the time. You know, this is 20 years ago. I'm sure Google was around, but I don't think I was using that. It's I think I Internet was Explorer. using dial-up. Like I remember wow. using dial up on my Dell computer to try to figure out like how I was going to um, meet more photographers. So I ended up finding that and I just started cold calling people nice. and <laughs> I had no business card. I didn't have a website. Um, I didn't have a portfolio. Uh, so one, there was this one photographer who asked me to come in. He said, he was like, sure, like I'll, I'll meet with you. So like I went in, like gave my spiel again, no business card, just me sitting there, like 
assuring him that I could do natural makeup. Mm. And, um, you know, he said to me, yeah, sure, I'll give you, I'll definitely keep you in mind. I'll give you a try sometime. And um, he wrote down three names. And he said, in the meantime, I'm going to recommend that you um, reach out to these three people. And um, I think they'll really like be interested in hearing from you too. It was two other photographers and a creative director in Indianapolis. And one of those creative directors was, um, he did a lot of work for Simon Malls and okay. some of like the local um, Philadelphia, like, like higher, higher end boutiques. Um, so that was kind of it. Like I, from that moment on, I only freelanced and um, yes, ended that's, up in film. That's an interesting career path because a lot of makeup artists, from what I understand, start out by assisting mm -hmm. another artist and then go and hang their own shingle on their own where you came from corporate and went right to freelance. Yeah, if that, if that, if I I'm did. getting that correct. I did. There was a makeup artist who I assisted a few times. This is where I get like real, I'm like, I'm kind of like, okay, man, I had no idea. Um, but I assisted uh, one of the makeup artists a few times and that was helpful, but not a lot, just because there was never, there wasn't a lot of opportunity to assist there yeah. um, because it's such a small market. So, but yes, there was one makeup artist in particular who I did assist a few times and that was really helpful, right? It gave me a better idea of what to look for on set. But again, like it took me a while to figure out creative director, who's the client, who's the direct, who's the DP, you know, like who, like all of, all of those things. And who should I be talking to? Who should I be getting direction from? You know, it took you time to learn those things? I did. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I consider myself a, per, a highly observant person. So like I can figure things out pretty quickly and that's kind of like, but again, as you know, every project is different. Mm. Right. Sometimes there are 50 people on a job and sometimes there are five. So. Um, and so now that you're here in Philly, what does your work consist of? Um, most of my work in Philly now is in, in, on the photo side of things. Photo. Yeah. I definitely have a few clients who I work with on the commercial like television, television side of things. Um, there's the, the one Lowe's show. I told you about um, that is they hire me directly that production company hires me directly but a lot of times if I'm working for anything television television related it usually is passed to me from another artist because when I moved to Philly I just I, I mean I kind of took the same approach just kind of call and reaching out to people yeah I made some like books that. I like I did a, you know by that time so let's see, if I started like full-time freelancing in 2005 until 2011, like even in India, I was constantly just like trying to think of ways to, um, I never really believed in putting all my eggs in one basket, basket. You know, that was always something that I felt like, okay, if I'm working with one person a lot, that's great. But um, like the importance of just constantly like building relationships is something that I, I did there and uh, as a result, I just would always, I was always trying to think of just little marketing ideas, ways to solicit my portfolio, um, whether it was an email or some kind of mm -hmm. like, I remember when I moved to Philly, I made these books, they were like mini portfolios and just kind of sent them out. I looked on the ASMP and I, you know, the ASMP here is much larger than- It's, it's closed down. Is it? Uh, the Philly chapter is closed down. Oh, wow. Yeah. Probably wow. a couple years ago, but the New York chapter is probably okay. st is still very active, but it was a very great resource as far as just looking on there and getting everybody's address. Right, So yeah. from what I'm hearing, you actually had a marketing plan. Like you actually sent out mailers, you did cold emails, you went to events and network and things like that. So as a business strategy, you actually had a plan to market your makeup services, to photographers and production companies because that is the space you wanted to play in. Yes, yeah. When I moved here, I knew what to look for. Okay. When I looked for, because you don't necessarily have to be a commercial photographer to be on ASMP. You can be a fine arts photographer. You can yeah. be like all these different things. So I knew what to look for on each 
photographer's website to see what kind of clients they were working for and had and um, was able to kind of narrow it down. Uh, my goal was to eventually work for anthropology mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I luckily came across a photographer who I who looked like he was working for that you know the urban like anthro brand mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the first studios I got into but you know I was so pretty you were working at anthro you got to work down there so that was probably three or four years later but because anthro didn't always shoot on model they shot on dress form for a long time and for they a long just time went on model yeah there. I got into the studio, and again, I was like, okay, how do I get into the studio? I sent an email, didn't hear anything. I sent a book, didn't hear anything. Um, so again, I just picked up the phone and called the studio manager, who oh. was also like the wife of the photographer at that time. And, you know, I just followed up and said, hi, you know, I sent an email. Um, I'm not sure if you got it, but like, I would love to come in and meet. And she said, you know, the best thing you can do is come in if you want to get into the studio is there was a makeup artist here named um, Nevis who worked in that studio too. She's no longer, she doesn't do makeup anymore, but um, she said, just come in and meet with Nevis and we'll try to get you in. And um, they had a couple of e-com clients that they got me in with. Mm -hmm. um, pretty low rate, but great crew. You know, I just wanted to be working. Mm -hmm. So I got in kind of with that studio maybe three or four months after moving here. And then like there were a couple of other photographers who I connected with too, who brought me on a couple of projects. Yeah, it sounds like you had an amazing drive. What, how often are you updating your book with testing now? Hardly ever. <laughs> so just, not. so do you get enough, so do you have enough client work that showcases what you would like to do that you can update your portfolio or do you just kind of neglect your portfolio? Okay, it's kind of both. So I have enough. I'm just, I've gotten bad at doing those types of things and I want to, like I do like doing those. I do like doing tests. There are a couple of stylists I work with who are lovely and like every time they ask me to do a test with them, if it works out, I oblige. Um, I also, if it works out, and again, like I'm pretty particular about, you know, who's shooting it, who's styling it, you know, who's the model, like all of those things, because it does have to work for me too, mm -hmm. right? Um, like I wanted, it has to work for everyone. So that's something I, I did learn. I, so I don't always say yes, but um, if I think it, it, it's going to work for me and I like the team, then I try to make it work. So how often are you updating your book? Like, pers for, like personal shoots and testing and things like that? Would you say maybe once a month you try to get a test shoot in? Or no. Once no. every three months, two months? Maybe once every four or five months. Once every four or five months yeah. you try to do a solid shoot that you really are behind to update your book with. Yes. Do you do those photo shoots here in Philly or do you travel to New York? Cause Most of them are done here. Okay. You know, like we have access to a lot of New York models and, you know, local Philly models as well. So, um, yeah, most of them, as far as tests go, I don't know if I've ever done a test in New York. You know, if anything, um, you know, with with the brands, like we all have relationships with agencies in mm -hmm. both Philly and New York. So it's not it's not hard to get a girl down here. Okay. You mentioned hair and makeup. Are you are you a licensed cosmetologist or you just do no. hair on set? occasionally how does that work i almost always do hair i had to really learn hair when i moved to philly um, i was kind of prepping myself too before i moved here because you know i told you when we were just chatting i was assisting an artist in new york um for probably two or three years before i moved to philly i wanted to create differently you know what i mean like she um i met her on myspace uh she had put something out on myspace that mm. she needed um, assistance in Miami for swim week and um, a friend of mine at the time in Indy had shown me her work and I started following her so when she put that out I was like hey you know I don't know if you'd be interested like I'm in Indianapolis but I'd love to assist you she was a New York artist um, who you know was on Pat McGrath's team for many years so I just thought what are the odds right but mm -hmm. you know I just I'm kind of somebody like I don't care if I don't hear from somebody and I don't care if the answer is no, you know, so 
Um, she said, sure, I'd love to have you on my team, you know, but I won't be able to pay for anything. And I was like, that's fine. You know, like I can Income absorb or, the costs, yeah. right? So like I went down, uh, Makeup Forever was our sponsor. Um, it was a Mercedes Benz sponsored fashion show that we worked like probably three or four shows. It was over the course of three or four days, I think. And then, so I did that for a couple of years and then I yeah. asked her, um, and I, you know, I made relationships with like, cause she was pretty loyal to her team also. So I became friends with some other New York makeup artists. After a couple of years, I asked, I said, do you think I'm, you know, strong enough or capable to be on your New York team when you do shows up there? And she was just like, I'd love to have you, but I can't pay, you know, like sometimes I can pay, sometimes there is money to, for, to assist on shows. Um, but she couldn't pay for like obviously my travel or anything like that So, you know, some of the other other girls and I would just kind of split a room fly herself in mm -hmm. stay the whole week um, Sometimes we would have two shows, you know and make <laughs> nothing uh, Sometimes we'd have several shows and then like, you know, make five hundred six hundred dollars, maybe yeah. um, but I did that probably from 2009 until 2013, like even after I moved here, I assisted her a few times, but like on shoots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you're not a cosmetologist, you do do light hair, you taught yourself these was... skills, how did you learn? So you learned from assisting her how to get your hair skills or how does that work? In some ways, um, but I also, you know, I did have to do hair in India as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was just like a learning curve for me. Um, and again, like while I was assisting this New York artist, um, I also, like I met so many people. Um, there was, I cannot remember his name, but a makeup artist who was doing a, a, a hair workshop for makeup artists. Okay, so give you those basic skills, yes. that knowledge you need, things yes. like that. Because the hair is never too crazy. I feel like when it gets very like editorial, that's yeah. when you hire a dedicated hair artist. But yeah. for the most time, like e-commerce is just, hey, make the natural hair look better yeah. or give yeah. it a little lift or give it a curl or yes. something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like I went to that, um, met even more people, um, but also working on the shows and like working with the hair team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to, I mean, I learned some pretty good tricks at like doing editorial hair. So I just, you know, again, I mean, I'm not, I'm watching it. I'm observing. I'm not always like watching to learn. They're just like little things that I've picked up along the way. I've also, you know, if I'm not doing makeup, I've worked with some like pretty amazing hairstylists too. So just kind of, again, not watching them to like steal be, be their present. secrets, just but just present, kind yeah. of being like, oh, okay, well that, okay. I can see like how I can kind of tweak or like perfect. Um, not perfect because I'm by no means say I was I'm that great of a hairstylist, but I do like doing hair. Okay, nice. um, I think the biggest challenge with hair, a lot of people struggle with is like knowing like the different textures mm -hmm. of hair That's and like cool. weights of hair. Learning different hair textures is a hard thing to do, but also being a makeup artist, there's the issue of different skin tones. And mm -hmm. there have been times where I've went to bat for makeup artists like, hey, yes, she's Asian or yes, she's white, but she can do black skin tones and things like that. I know hair is, is definitely harder, mm -hmm. but as far as skin, it's, it's, it's color matching, right? Or mm -hmm. have you ever lost a job because you don't have enough black people in your book? Or no, so no. you have enough black people in your book? I always try to make sure. Yeah, and also right. like my background with Mac, mm -hmm. like that's something that I'm incredibly confident doing makeup yeah. on, on dark skin tones. Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's a hard one. Because sometimes I have a client, I'm just like, yo, this person can definitely do yeah. it. They can do it. I've seen it. But it's just, they just don't have enough yeah. of that in their book. So yeah. I try to keep it in my book and also on my Instagram, you know? So yeah. like, I mean, that's kind of my, me updating my portfolio is mostly just Showing posting diversity. on Insta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So someone just starting out, do you think it's important that they must do both hair and makeup? Or can someone say, hey, I only want to do makeup and not hair i think it's really hard to only do one right now okay. yeah yeah i do think yeah. it is very hard yeah a lot in, of jobs and all in, in in all markets yeah a lot of jobs if we don't have somebody that can swing they're not mm -hmm. paying for two people right another thing that comes up a lot on e-commerce and photo shoots and i just need to ask somebody this 
How long should a first look take? For e-com? Yeah. Mm. I I consider myself to work very like pretty quickly. So I said um, makeup only. How, how long should? Oh, it? for makeup only. Yeah, I'm just curious. Like, like thirty minutes. Really, thirty minutes. Okay. Yeah, twenty so, to thirty. Depends on what. Yeah, depends on what you want. You okay. know, is that too long? Nah, that seems like perfect, and I've seen it done in thirty. But yeah, sometimes people never, are offended. I, I don't want to mm. be in somebody's face for you know what I mean. Like yeah. I like to talk, obviously, but um, like I also like to keep the day moving. You know, okay. so like. And again, it's probably like my Mac background that I'm just like talk and work, talk and work, you know. So I see a lot of people talking and stopping and looking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'll, I'll do that sometimes too. Like, and again, depends on the client. Um, but I, I don't know, like, talk and work, you talk and work, talk and work. Okay, um, so first look makeup, 30 minutes, and then hair, we put on another 30 maybe or 40? I would love an hour. I would love an hour to do both. Oh, wow. Um, I try to be 45 to an hour. Like that's always with both. my, with both. And again, it depends on the hair. It depends on the client. Like mm -hmm. how, how much hair, how did the model show up with okay. her hair? Right. There are a lot of variability. There's so many variables that go into that, um, yeah. that sometimes is not considered. Um, What's the work, you know, what's the lighting? Like, what's the work environment? You know, yeah. there are like a lot of things where I'm just kind of like, like I'm not doing my best work, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and um, you know, it's, I'm like cramped into a small space yeah. and, um, but. Cause I'm finding more and more we're having issues. Well, certain clients, they're like, you know, first look is taking way too long. And, you know, it may be their makeup artist. I don't know what that person's experience is like actually on photo shoots, whatever the case may be. But I have one particular client where like first look is creeping into like an hour, hour and 10, hour and like some change. And I, I, I personally was like, that's too long. But I don't ever want to rush somebody else's craft. But I have yeah. gotten 30 minute makeup. And oh, it yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. No, so I, I just want to make sure that's I, reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. Um, Definitely. Again, if someone is like, if they're having a breakout or something like that, you know, or again, if they came with their hair wet, you know, there are always things to consider. Um, but I always communicate that, okay. right? That's something like I would come to you or um, whoever and say, look, you know, this, I might need like 10 extra minutes. Um, is that okay? Like, this is what's going on. And so, yeah, I just always try to communicate. Just hearing you talk, it seems like you had a very good grasp on marketing yourself and I guess a level of professionalism. And a lot of makeup artists that I work with, maybe we're doing a test or this is their first commercial shoot. They're like, how can I get more work? How can I be better? And some people struggle with it a lot. Like some people get into the industry and yeah. get out. In your eyes, what are some qualities of a good makeup artist? Being good and fast. Fast, being good and fast, good and fast. Uh -huh. being on time, um, being present. I mean, how many I could, I could go on and on about this, like being present on set, being a good listener. I think it's probably one of the biggest things. And this is something I tell a lot of people. Um, I don't by any means think I'm this great, amazing makeup artist, but I know I'm a good listener. Right. Yeah. And that I know like can say with 100% confidence and I listen to what a client is asking of me. And if it's, it's not my vision and I do the best I can to execute what that is. And if when I do that and go up and we take a photo and they, it's not, you know, I'm not offended. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'm going to listen to, you know, sometimes, um, people can struggle with like color, like interpretations of color. Mm -hmm. yeah, or hues. Some people make the skin too orange and like that's yes. a lot. Yeah. Or a client will say, I want a rosy lip or I want like a blush lip or I want a peach lip. And what I envision may not be like a photo, what they've envisioned, you know, that tone. So, you know, the, just being a good listener and like, I always say, can you show me a picture, right? If it's wrong, it always helps. Like, can you just show me a picture? I can't see like what, what's in your head. Like it just, it always helps to see a visual. So I think just like, again, being a good listener, even outside of client relationships, if I have a personal client, for example, or like working when we're working with real people, mm. um, 
I think it's important to listen to what their comfort level is with makeup, right? Um, as opposed to being like, oh, like you need all this because you're going in front of the camera. You know, people start to feel self-conscious. The more that you're touching them, the more time you're spending on them. That's where there's like a little, there's an exception for me sometimes with television production because they're never going to give you an hour. Like never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not going to give you, you're lucky to get 30 minutes because they want people done in 15 to 20, usually with commercial stuff. But when it comes to like real people, the longer they sit in the chair, the more nervous they, they often get. So, okay. you know, so you to get they're all, you know, again, it just, it depends. But I think being a good listener, being on time, um, being present mm -hmm. on set, being fast and good. Okay. And yeah. I'll say that's good advice. Yeah. So with photography, there's a game sometimes photographers have to play where we specialize in a certain type of work, but we do other genres and we don't necessarily always show that. Is that the same thing in makeup where you specialize in something, but you do other genres just to kind of, you know, fill the yeah. gaps and make money? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the other jobs that you do? Oh gosh, probably, just, probably just the same, you okay. know, as photographers or directors or um, anyone. It's just like commercial healthcare, I, mm -hmm. you know, I, since I moved to Philly, I haven't had to work on a lot of healthcare or pharma, but it's definitely in my wheelhouse. Okay. I feature like most of like the beauty things that I work on, whether it's jewelry or apparel or, or something like that, or um, like more like lifestyle things. But yeah, definitely I work on healthcare. I mean, yesterday I worked on something for the New Jersey Department of Health. Okay. You know, so it's every it's everything across that's, the board. Yeah, that's normal, yeah. Yeah. But I, I do hear some makeup artists and they say like, I won't do a wedding, period. Like I won't do regular people. And some makeup artists will do, you know, T V and film, but I know others are like, Look, I can't do film anymore. I can't stay up late. I can't yeah. I can't do the hours. I can't do do you have any hard no's? At this point, or are you kind of just like? Well, I mean, like I do. I also have a hard no hard with no. film because oh, film, um, no. I've never, you know, I there was a brief period where I thought I would go into film mm -hmm. um, after the kids got older and like out of the house because I, I would have the time. But also when I got older, I started to get more tired. So I was like, no, I don't. Like, yeah, no, I'm very spoiled by my photo clients and just like having, you know, five or six, you know, sometimes it runs later and that's okay. Um, I don't have any desire to work on film. Um, not as a makeup artist. Mm -hmm at least as far as brides go like i again like i kind of stopped i mean i did so many brides when i worked for mac and also in india i still i still did a fair amount but once i started full-time freelance it was easier to not do brides and have my weekends free for, mm -hmm. to be with my family so when i moved to philly i just didn't have any bridal connects you know, it wasn't that I didn't want to do brides. In fact, it would have been great to have brides when I first moved here. I don't have any, no, so the, my only hard no is this film. No. Okay. I, I do, I love brides. Um, again, I don't necessarily solicit those services because I just don't have the portfolio to do that. Um, but if somebody needs help, you'll jump in and help them out, one of your friends or something Absolutely, like that. I love that actually. I would rather do that on a wedding. Do you currently have an agent? No. Mm -hmm. Did you ever seek out a representation? I did. I was with Utopia, who I think they went under during the pandemic. I was with Utopia for a year or two. It was my first experience with an agent. I was always hesitant to get one because, you know, I just heard so many stories. They take 90 days or, you know, mm -hmm. 90 days to pay. Um, you know, you're beholden. You don't know your schedule. And I'd always had, you know, direct relationships with my clients and, mm -hmm. Um, build and communicated so uh, they took me in probably because of my clients so did you um, have to give them a cut of your existing clients or only I did clients? I like negotiated a lower percentage for the first year um, just to see where it would go and you know of course just like you know they took 90 days to pay hmm. and um, even though those same clients when I build it took less than 30 so um, they weren't getting me enough work. New work. Yeah, for me to stay with them. So I mm. ended up terminating the relationship. I basically just sent an email. I think it was like 2019, December. No, it was January of 2020, thankfully. 
just terminating the relationship, saying, you know, I think that by this time you've made more money from me than I made from wow. you. So how did you learn the business acumen, like the invoicing? Because that's the part that I hear a lot of makeup artists struggle with and they justify getting an agent because they're like, I don't want to send invoices. I don't want to chase down money. I, I'm not good with those things. So how did you learn the business side of makeup? That's a really good question. I don't know. Um, I think, you know, I, when someone told me to invoice them, I think I kind of looked up what that looks like. Um, I got with the service almost right away. FreshBooks, it's like QuickBooks, but mm -hmm. it's FreshBooks. And they were a startup, I think, whenever I signed on with them almost 20 years ago. Uh, and it just made it easy for me. But as far as, you know, I, I, it's something I really wanted to do and like, and also take care of my family. So there was like something for me that I just would ask questions. You know what I mean? Like if I didn't know the answer, like I would ask questions. Um, so the business side is not, and again, like I think, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, like I, I'm okay if someone thinks that something less of me if I ask a question that I don't know the answer to. You know what I mean? Like, I would rather have the answer. Um, I'm okay with rejection. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we all kind of have to, like, lean into some discomfort when it comes. So it's been really just, like... Just ask the question. Uh, ask yeah. the question and, like, do the work. As far as the business side goes, I just... I think probably like also, you know, just coming from Mac, you know, and I also waited to, I worked in the service industry while I, while I was in college. So there was also this like being good with people, yeah. you know, for me, it's just kind of like, okay, I mean, just having basic soft skills and being able to write an email or um, do follow-ups, you know, being okay with follow-ups, like, mm -hmm. you know, just, uh, being okay with bugging, being like, okay, this, pro this person probably isn't even opening my email <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at this point, but I'm going to send it anyway, you know, eventually they'll be like, okay, like, let me just pay her, get maybe, off my back. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've never really had to change. I've been like very, very lucky. Like I have, there have only been a few times where I've had to, you know, be a little more assertive mm -hmm. about payment, but overall, like I... I don't have any issues. And honestly, if someone's not paying me, like, you know, I just send an email. I'm like, okay, can you please um, confirm that payment is being mailed? Like, I don't ask. I think, can I say something about this? Because I think it's something that like a lot of women and like, you know, maybe men do it too when they're asking for money. That's right. They struggle saying, where's They struggle my money? saying, yeah. where's yeah. my money? And yeah. that's something that I have, I probably, most of my career have I, and it's hard for me because like i'm a pretty empathetic person you know what i mean like and i mm -hmm. don't want to well, i'm not even gonna say that because that's not true i was gonna say i don't want to offend anybody but at the same time I'm just kind of like uh, well actually the older i get like it's okay but it's um not apologizing like that's and i i do say this to some of the, the people who assist me um or who have asked for advice. I'm like, don't say sorry. Like when you write that email, don't say, I'm sorry to bother you. Mm. You know, just like be direct. Like, hi, I'm contacting you on invoice like 3401. Please confirm it will be mailed by the end of day. Like that's my, that's what they, that's what I get. Nice. So. <laughs> what are your long-term goals now with makeup in your career? That's a really good question. Uh, my long-term goals, so, I mean, can I talk about the nonprofit? Yeah, sure. Because, I mean, my long-term goals, like after working with so many women, you know, in, in 25 years and like hearing so many stories, I mean, my, my long-term go goal is to be of greater service to women in need. Mm. Like that's my long-term goal, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if things pick up with your nonprofit, do you see makeup phasing out a bit or is makeup something for the future you want to continue to do? I see it phasing out. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I do. I mean, I'm 51, so um, I, I feel like it's been 
so good to me and like I hesitate to say this out loud and put this out to the world yeah. but you know it's been so good to me and um, sometimes I'm just like ready to like pass it mm. and because I just I know there are a lot of like eager women out there who want to get in and break into the industry um, you know from your experience when does a makeup artist age or phase out I don't think that that's a thing. That's not a thing? Okay. I don't think so. No, I mean, I know plenty of women who are still like busy, booked all the time and they're 60s, like close to 60. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think I, you know, not having a partner like make, gives me, it, I look at things differently, you know, as far as like healthcare and benefits and things like that. So, you know, a huge part of me like pivoting or like having this desire to pivot um, has to do a lot with that also. Um, and you know, just, are you saying there's no security in the field, like make, being a makeup artist? Oh, or no, there's definitely pivot? security, you know, like, you I mean, I raised you can go internal, you know, yeah, there are a lot of companies yeah. work for you, get benefits I, and right, retirement yes. and things like that. Yes. Yeah. No, there's definitely security, but you know, I mean, I raised three kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I raised three kids on this. So it's a great career. It's a great career. Yeah. Um, yes, a really great career. That's yeah, good. indeed. Oh. And last question I'll ask you is what advice do you have for someone just starting out? In his career I mean I think you know like you back to your point earlier most makeup artists like you know like assisted started assisting mm -hmm. and I think that that's what most people should do you know I got lucky um, as, I mean both in Indianapolis and here um, but I also assisted you know mm -hmm. so I was assisting while I was doing it um, I think assisting and assisting a lot of people and like being on a lot, as many sets and environments as you can possibly be on and until you feel confident enough to start taking your own clients. Um, that and, you know, just being ethical um, when you're assisting and even when you're not, you know, just really, I know a lot of people are eager to just be working and busy and, you know, with social media, they see what other people are doing and, and feel a certain way. I get it, you know, like I am also can be one of those people. Um, I didn't grow up with it, so I have a different perspective, you know, like I for the most part, have a pretty healthy relationship with it and have always been one to, when I start to have self-doubt, focus on myself. So that's like another piece of advice. Focus like yourself. you can look to people for inspiration, right? I think if you're not looking to people for inspiration and if you're looking at other artists and it feels bad, then do something, take that energy and channel it into sending an email to a client, following up with a client, booking a test shoot. You know, I, I believe in manifestation. Um, and I think that like where we put our energy, like that's how things grow. If you feed something with love, it grows. And so if you don't, it withers away. So I think that with that being said, it's just really important to like focus on yourself, self-improvement, you know, um, being ethical when it comes to, you know, there's this whole uh, my client mm. kind of thing. I do not ever believe, I have never believed in my client. I do not have a contract with any of my clients, um, nor does do any, do a lot of artists, but there's still like these, these unspoken rules of um, like crossing lines and boundaries and just like respecting other artists work and pro in their process also. Okay. Thanks for doing this talk. Sure. Appreciate it.